do you want to live off grid but need internet connection and don't know where to start? That is what we are going into in this week's video. Hello, hello everybody. My name is Richard and I run the Terraform Homestead down here in Southern Arizona. I have been living off grid for over five years now. And in that time, internet technology has changed drastically. I have been running my own marketing business, doing website design, graphic design, video work, things like that for close to 10 years now and lived on the road for three and a half of that. I have lived off grid for over five of that now. And, and as part of that, I have needed reliable internet connection to run my business, to do day-to-day -day things. And I've seen the evolution of technologies over the years. So we're gonna go into what I think is best and set up some extenders uh, this week because it's tough to get internet across a large property like we have. We have 24 acres and we're needing to extend our Wi-Fi range quite a bit to facilitate some other things we were doing out here on the property. For most of my travels, I ended up using a Google Fi hotspot, which was okay. It worked fine most of the time whenever I had cell signal, but whenever I was living on the road, I would often be out in the middle of nowhere, have no cell signal and frequently have to go into town to go to coffee shops and things like that. When I first moved to the property five years ago, we were using some janky systems. I had a separate phone plan that we hooked up to a router that it was just this convoluted system. Um, we had data caps, things like that, that made life really difficult. Our speeds were pretty terrible. So anytime I was having to upload for YouTube or things like that, I would go into town, use the local hotspot uh, at the library. And yeah, it was just really difficult. Several years ago, uh, we got on the wait list when Starlink came out and Starlink has been a game changer. Like not to get into politics, you can love Elon, you can hate Elon, but I am a big fan of his businesses and the business models that he has done. And Starlink is top notch. I'm a huge fan of them. So we have been using Starlink for the last several years out on the property as our primary internet source. The issue that I have had with Starlink is its limited range. So I have a 24 acre property. I have a bunch of tiny buildings out on the property. So I have a 250 square foot house that I live in. My shop is here. That's a couple hundred yards away from the main house. My studio's, you know, another hundred yards away from this place. And then we have also started a hip camp site, which is about an eighth of a mile that way. And so I'm not able to get internet currently at all to our camp area, and I've been limited on the internet I can get to my shop, to my studio, things like that. The solution I found up to this point is to use the Starlink mesh networks. Those work okay, but even 100 yards away, like they're not really great. So they're intended to be used within a single household versus spread out over many, many acres. We're going to be installing a Wi-Fi bridge system to see if we can get internet down to our hip camp area, our campsite rental area, and taking you guys along for the journey of that. So for context, the Starlink system is hooked up in my tiny house currently. We basically have our satellite dish that comes down to the router. The router puts out a Wi-Fi signal, I should say, that we can connect our devices to. The node network that we have with the Starlink setup, I have currently three nodes on the property. So we have one in my house, that is the main network. We have one in our workshop here that picks up from the main house and then bounces over to our studio space that also sends internet to our bus. So I've got, like I said, Alexa devices and things like that, security cameras um, that require Wi-Fi in each of those places. And so since we are close-ish within 100 yards of each other, those node networks work okay. We'll do some speed tests here in a little bit and I'll kind of show you what the speed tests are for each of those locations. Currently, we have no internet connection down in our camp. This is where we host like work trade people. We have been hosting hip camp people, which is kind of like an Airbnb, but for campsites. I would like to get internet down there. I think that would be a great amenity to have for the campers that come through. And fortunately, this company, Uvi, reached out to us and sent us a wireless bridge network to try out. So we're gonna be setting that up today. I'm gonna to be taking you guys through the process of setting that up. And then we're gonna be doing some speed tests in my house, in the shop, in the studio, and in the bus, and also down at camp to see if this solution works for us. UV did send us this network for free, but we're giving an honest review because that's what I do on this channel. We don't take sponsorships uh, just to write a good review. I'm gonna show you all the process of getting this set up and identify any problems that I may have. So the idea behind this, we have a couple different components. So this is our booster. We have two of these. 
These are going to mount on the exterior of the buildings. And then basically it's going to, it's our, our bridge. So it's going to shoot Wi-Fi from our main Starlink router to the one down at camp. And then that is going to run into this, which is a secondary router. And then the Wi-Fi down at camp will get picked up by this. People will be able to connect to this. In theory, it should all work together really nicely. This has up to 100 megabytes a second download speed. For this, I'm not necessarily looking to get wireless speeds like super crazy high where we can do like super fast uploads to YouTube or anything like that. I'm comfortable using that for my house, but it would be nice for people to be able to check social media, do basic internet things, stuff like that. The other thing with this, you need power. So this is what's called a PoE device or power over ethernet device. So our ethernet cable is going to run from the bridge system to this, which plugs into an outlet, normal 120 volt outlet, and then powers this device. And then this will power our router as well. We did end up purchasing a couple extra Cat6 cables because the ones that came with the device were like six inches long. Um, we needed about 15 feet to run from the exterior of our building to the interior of our buildings. Let's look at our current Starlink system and then uh, start getting this set up, see how this does set up, how easy it is, and run some tests. Here we are on the exterior of the house. Y'all may be able to see way up there. There is our satellite dish for the Starlink system. I've had nothing but good things to say about this system. We've been using it for several years and it has always performed. We haven't really had any issues with downtime, lower speeds, anything like that. Coming into the house, we have our internal system here. So basically that is mounted up on the roof and screwed in, sealed, pretty easy to set up. We have a single cable that runs kind of behind my mess over here down into our primary router. So this is our primary router for the Starlink system. I did purchase this, I guess, ethernet hookup, and this would be required to hook up our bridge system. Um, so you need an ethernet port. So what, what I've ordered, and that should be coming in a few days, is a splitter. So that way I can still maintain the direct ethernet cable to my Mac mini, and then we'll also hook up the bridge system to our main router. Let's do a speed test real quick and just get a baseline for where we are at. So we're gonna do a quick speed test right now on the interior of my tiny house. So I am sitting currently like 10 feet away from our main router. So it's looking like at this very moment, we are getting 206 megabytes down, 28 megabytes up. And yeah, that's pretty good. Like I said, I've been using Starlink for a couple of years now. I'm generally very happy with their product, their service, the upload, download. And that is coming from somebody who does YouTube videos, video, editing, website design, things like that, that I need a pretty fast connection. So a little context for distance. This is our shop. Uh, right inside of this window here is where I have our first node. Everything comes from the main house to here and then splits off from here to our bus and to my pottery studio. You can see the main house right there probably a little less than 100 yards away. So a little frustrating with the node system not being able to reach terribly far. It's really more intended for a single household, uh, but it is what it is up here, and this is what I've used so far. Context from here. <laughs> uh, we do have our node system back here, and then the studio is right here, trailer here, and then our bus is here. So those are all very close to this second node. And I'm curious to see how it changes over the spaces. So we are in the shop. We are about 100 yards away from Starlink router. We've got two windows that we're going through and about 100 yards. I'm gonna run this test again. We were looking pretty good. So we were at like 206. It's looking like we're pretty, pretty similar right now. We are now in our studio. We are going to run this speed test one more time. Looking a little bit slower in here. This is definitely the farthest node away from the main system. We are going through two nodes. We are going through two windows, a steel door, a steel sided or aluminum sided RV. And then our router is actually like tucked way in deep into a cabinet. It is looking like we are getting slower speeds. We're at 171 versus like the low 200s, but Again, out here, I'm not uploading videos. I'm really just connecting to the Alexa speaker, hooking onto my Wi-Fi, all of that. So I would say 171 is pretty good. If we can get anything close to that with the bridge system that we're gonna set up, I would be very, very pleased, especially considering this bridge system is basically the equivalent cost of the Starlink nodes. So I've started to unbox this UV system. I wanna take you guys through what is included in this. Uh, they have, it's a, fully comprehensive kit, which is really nice. So 
Uh, we have our router right here, which comes with plug and ethernet cable. This is going to be what actually broadcasts our Wi-Fi signal down at camp. The system also comes with two power over ethernet plugs. So those are going to power our extenders. And then it also came with this really nice mounting kit. This is going to be our mount for the extender or the bridge network. It looks like you can hook it to a pole if you wanted to. So there's these little things and then you can tie it in that way. Take off uh, this pole mount for here. I think I'll probably keep the pole mount for the RV because we do have a set of stairs or a ladder right behind it um, that I can mount that onto the pole. So you'll see both, both examples. Um, so this is kind of cool. It does have like an articulating pivot, which is very nice. So we can line it up exactly how we need to line it up. It is very windy today, which should make it really fun to get up on the ladder and install all of this, but we'll, we'll get that. We'll figure it out. So. so this appears to mount like that. And then we have uh, these, which are nice. They're actually steel. Don't like doing plastic zip ties because they just rot out and break, but this looks like it's pretty good quality and it's going to last a while out in our desert environment. So I'm gonna get these mounted up and then we'll get to actually mounting these onto the house. You can see how we are mounted here. Really simple setup. Uh, I'm just mounting to this ladder to get on top of the roof. And you can see we have a clear line of sight to the tiny house here. Less than 15 minutes, we have our bridge system set up. I got some new supplies, so we are ready to get this internet set up and extender finished out. So what I have is I have two 15 foot Cat5 E cables. One of these is going to go from our extender outside in through here and hook up to our main Starlink router. I have one that will go down in the RV at camp through the wall to our PoE, power over ethernet port. And then I got a six foot cable that will go from that power over ethernet port to our router down at camp. Uh, I also got this splitter, so that way I can hook up my computer still to the landline or to the ethernet port as well as our extender. So these weren't terribly expensive, uh, six, seven bucks a cable, not that big a deal. Just make sure you're getting the length of cable that you need for your build out uh, because the UVI system does not come with its standards. So it is super windy out today. So we're gonna time-lapse this and put some cool music and get all of these installed. We are all wrapped up as far as getting this extension network, bridge network set up, and it was pretty easy. So they have pretty good instructions in the uh, booklet that comes with it. I did find that the booklet is intended for Windows users. I'm a Mac user, uh, but I found a good video that explains the process of setting up your network for a Mac. So I will leave that video down in the description below. Just got done doing some tests on the Wi-Fi from our main Starlink network, the UV network extension down at our camp, and a test here in our studio and it is actually quite interesting results. So our network for the Starlink, so sitting right next to the router on the Wi-Fi, we were getting 137.5 megabits per second upload and eight, eight megabits per second download. The UV system, the UV system, we ended up getting 91.8 megabits download and nine megabits upload. So we actually got a faster upload speed, which was really interesting. And then the thing that really surprised me was our mesh network. I just did a test over in our studio and we were only getting 32 megabits download. So like less than a quarter of what our main router is from the main Starlink through the two mesh nodes. We're only getting 32 download and seven uploads. So that was a really interesting result considering our mesh network is maybe 200 yards away from the main setup and the UV system is uh, 
close to an eighth of a mile, if not more away. So knowing this, I probably would have gone with the mesh network to start instead of buying multiple uh, mesh nodes, I guess, the Starlink nodes, uh, because the UV system, numbers don't lie, we only had a 40 megabytes download loss going an eighth of a mile versus a 100 megabyte loss going 200 yards. So that was wild, crazy, but pretty cool result. So that's gonna wrap up this video. If you are interested in any of these products, UV has given us a 20% discount code. I've got that down in the link in the description. That is only good for three weeks. So be sure to get that code today, like jump on that right away. I also have a referral link to Starlink. I've been a big fan of them. I've been using them for over three years now and still have the first gen system. So I'm sure they have improved since I got this system, but I've been really, really happy with that. So I've left you guys a referral link below. They do some great deals as well. Their stuff is just improving so dramatically day over day. So Thank you guys for watching. If you want to see some other cool builds out here, some other cool techie stuff, some other cool off-grid living things, I've got a few videos for you queued up right now. Go check those out. Go build something cool.